Hey guys, I'm Nick and today I will walk you through this RBD destruction tutorial in Houdini and also show you how we set up a scene in Cinema 4D and create this cool little commercial style animation. If you're new to this channel, I'm doing videos twice a week, sharing my knowledge primarily in Houdini, Cinema 4D and Octane Render. If you find these videos helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel. Also, today it's my birthday and I'm 27 years old, so I thought why not to celebrate that with a 27% discount to all of my project files, assets, basically all the stuff you can find on my Gamroad. So let's use the code NICK27, just type that code before you check out and you will get your discount. The discount will be valid for next 24 hours. Alright guys, we are in Houdini and I will walk you through this project. So, so technique described in this tutorial is based on resilient picture companies, a tutorial about exploding things and basically I will walk you through my interpretation of uh, the setup described in that tutorial. As always, links to the original author of this technique is in the description. Obviously you would need to drop your geomesh and then dive in and then we we will need to add our input files. So just tab file and here's your file you can import any sort of geometry. Here I have a rock and I have a, some sort of a G-Shock watch. Here it is. Now let's work with the, with the rock first. So I added a transform node um, scaled it down and positioned in the center of the viewport. Then I added a remesh so we have even topology on all sides with all the dense bumps and all that stuff. Then we need to do a VDB from that uh, rock. So I added a VDB from Polygon's node, voxel size set to 0.4, 0.04. And yeah, basically that's it. Then let's go to the watch. So for the watch, I reverse the normals and then I apply the match size node which basically also centers and resizes our watch. Then I also added a VDB from polygons with a voxel size of 0.04 which gives us enough detail. So the initial idea and here you cannot see that clear but basically if you do a VDB subtract and uh, plug your rock and the watch in the VDB subtract uh, node and set the operation to be SDF difference, uh, basically here in our rock there will be a kind of like a fossil effect of our watch. So let me just quickly build a setup to show you. So here I added a boolean and uh, just a simple box and plug the convert VDB into the boolean and you see that we have kind of like the watch geometry is kind of like stamped into the uh, into our rock. So that's the effect we are wanting. And uh, when we will be exploding this stuff, you won't necessarily see the, the, the details of the watch. But if you will uh, have something like bigger than the watch without that thin belt, it, it might be it might be better. But uh, anyways, let me delete the boolean and the box. And uh, then we, yeah, we basically add a convert VDB node after our VDB subtract. We convert it to be polygons and then we apply a remesh node. So now we remeshed our geometry and let's set up our RBD fracturing. So here in RBD material fracture, uh, we basically set up how our fracture will look like and here I have two levels of detailing of fracturing to be precise so uh, first one is just two points basically it slices this rock like in half vertically and then I added a second level of detailing of, or yeah, fracturing, uh, which is uh, 20 points. So each of the first level fractures gets 20 points, so it's 40 fractured pieces. Also, chipping and detail should be enabled. I have experimented with these and these are really depending on the geometry you are using. So for example, here I set detail size to be 0.5 and depth volume voxel size, I think it's 0.2. Uh, interior detail and edge detail are checked. Also freeze weights are checked um, in chipping tab, chipping ratio is set to 0.2. The lower this uh, ratio, the less chipping will appear and the higher, more super small 
uh, details will chip from the initial geometry. In the constraints, I just set primary strength of the glue constraint to be zero. And then there is a super important thing. We need to drop the RBD configure node, but before that, you should drop UV project node and maybe UV quickshade to just view the UV map. So let me show you how it looks. Now we have our UV map. Don't be scared that it's it's a bit uh, stretched here because we will be using box projection or cubic mapping. So yeah, it doesn't matter. But if you don't do this step, your material, when the fractured pieces will fly away, when they explode, your texture will be flowing on the surface and will ruin all the beauty. So then we set up the RBD configure. Here I think I just uh, set a speed limit to be 20 and spin limit to be uh, 90 degrees in this case. And then we just add our RBD bullet solver. So here at the forces I've decreased the gravity where yeah, basically turned off the gravity by uh, setting it to be zero. I'll also, in the constraints, I added uh, to delete certain hard constraints at frame number two. And uh, then I attached our geometry of the watch into the fourth input, which says collision geometry. That's how our fractured pieces will not intersect with the actual watch. So here, double click on RBD bullet solver and you will see some really great stuff. So what do we, what do we have here? We added a sub solver node and it's sub, the sub solver node first input of the dot geometry is bind to point velocity and point velocity is super cool because we can set our initial impulse of the of the fractured pieces so I added a bit of velocity to so the pieces like go down a bit uh, but here in the curl noise just play with these parameters and they will give you different results so maybe you don't want that super fast breaking or explosion effect then you can lower the scale of the noise and if you want that boom just yeah play with these values and you will see and after that we also added an enable solver so basically you will need to start at frame larger than one so here we are starting at frame number two because here in enable solvers I set dollar f equals equals two and this means that everything that's connected to the enable solver is active and influences the physics or geometry or anything only at the frame number two all right looks good to me so we have have some chipping here we have all these fractured pieces and here it was some part of the actual watch cool so what do we need to do after that I wanted to add some fine dust and the easiest probably not the most realistic thing but the easiest thing is to add a pop net and here in the pop net you will see that we have our pop object and source first input your default stuff here in the source first input i set the source to be used for uh, scatter scatter on the surfaces uh, impulse activation in the burst tab is set to zero impulse count to zero and i wanted the particles to be emitted until the frame 20 so i set constant activation to be dollar f less than 20 so basically all the frames that are less than 20 and constant burst rate is set to 10,000. Looks like this. So you can see that it's not looking that organic. I think it's it's too much uh, of the uniform particle velocity. So I added a pop win with a pretty big amplitude and uh, air resistance. And how it looks right now, yep, much more like a explosion or something. All right, so now we need to add an ROP Alembic nodes and export our Alembics. So I added a ROP Alembic to the watch, added a ROP Alembic to the actual RPD simulation and for the particles. And then I exported that frame range from one to 120 and let's open Cinema 4D and assemble our scene. If you are enjoying this tutorial so far and want to support me in my channel, as always, all the project files are available on Gamroad and the link is in the description.
Alright guys, so we are in the Cinema 4D and here you can see that I've imported uh, our particles, our our rock and uh, and the watch. So what I did first is I I downloaded this watch from TurboSquid and I saw that it has a few different materials and all that stuff so I wanted to make sure that I'm not working with an Alembic which hasn't got any like face maps and like the, the individual elements. So I've got my original watch added it as a child to the Alembic watch and then just rotated it to match the actual size of the Alembic. Then I turned off the Alembic and we got our good textured watch. So for the lights, I set my main lights. Those are three, one on the back, one on the side and one of kind of like more of a highlight light. So let me show you because these main lights are more for um, rock geometry. So let me start my render, make it a bit smaller. So here's our rock with a pretty harsh shadows and that really prominent outline. I will touch about the materials a bit later so let's just check how the lights are set up and then I added more of a soft lights which are kind of more for filling in the darkness maintaining a good contrast between shadows and highlights but just to make it a little bit more brighter in some areas uh, then so let's talk about the materials so I had this rock material uh, which is basically a cubic projection 7% uh, size so it's tiling but you actually cannot see that so everything's fine and then I added the mixed material and mixed material is basically a combination of rock and very very bright emissive material and this material is attached to the concrete fracture one inside so let me show you what it does so when the fracturing begins you can see that light and it's because our fracture our mix material which we animate the float value here so this mix material is attached to the first level of fracturing and as you remember our first level of fracturing is just two fractured pieces if i change this one fracture one to fracture two you will see that majority of these are emissive but to me it was a bit too much so i just wanted like a cut here and uh, then i animate the float value of this mix material and all these values become just regular rock materials so uh, let's get to the frame like let's say 48 where you can see the watch it's beautiful but it's missing some particles and here we can drop our octane scatter node and add a tiny 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 sphere and also it has a material this octane diffuse material just black black octane diffuse and if we enable our particle geometry now you see these particles you can even lower the specular and then they will not look so prominent and yeah I think actually this one is a good one so yeah and then I also animated a camera because we are starting like looking at the rock and uh, we will be a bit far away and I wanted to get closer so in the end we land on the shot. I also here animated the opacity of the octane diffuse and from the frame 60 I'm lowering the opacity of that material because I thought at the end it will be a bit too messy if we have all these particles here. So that's it. Alright guys that's all thanks so much for watching I really hope it was helpful and if it was subscribe to my channel, leave a like to this video and comment what topics you would like me to cover in future videos. I will be back very soon. Bye!